Hey, I'm Matt from Michigan. So, when I, I think I actually said, hey, I'd love to be on this panel, and I realized I watched the film by myself and didn't have to talk after it, so I was realizing that as I was watching it and thinking, like, I gotta pull myself together here. Um, so I'm Matt, I am a Chatfield dad. I'm sure there's, see, I, I pull myself together, right? I'm sure there's kids out there who are like, is that seriously Aiden Ellis' dad up there talking? There's no way that he does this kind of stuff, but I do. Um, so I'm the deputy director of the Johnson Depression Center over at the School of Medicine, Department of Psychiatry. And I also do a lot of community engagement work, community education, awareness. This is a lot of what we, what we do. Um, so happy to do it, was happy to help get this at Chatfield. Chatfield was awesome doing it. And by the way, I'll put this little plug in there unless you're gonna do it later, but it'll be a double plug. Um, and I'll speak for Tess and Honey. This can happen at other schools, and it'd be awesome to happen at other schools. So if you know people, Columbine, oh. teacher out there, right? <laughs> other schools, we can do this or they can do this, would love to do it. They are back in Philly, but obviously have a connection here in Colorado. It is true. Colorado is a physically healthy state. Mentally, we are not very healthy. Um, and I think that gets lost in a lot of the things that we see with like best places to live, how healthy we are. Our rates of mental health, our rates of access are not great. So just know that. Um, and so the more that we can do this, the more they can do this, the more we get it out um, is really helpful because people just understanding these things, that is such, makes things so much better. Just understanding like we talked about. So I do have some slides. These are slides from trainings that we do. Um, I'll just mention a few things. So one, and, and you can relate these to mental health as well. It doesn't have to be just suicide, but prevention matters. Everybody being here, it matters. Um, talking to people, it does matter. It doesn't seem like it does. We actually had a story. We did a training once. Um, it was a guy in a, a, he owned a business down in Colorado Springs. He came back to us and said, I wasn't totally sure that I totally bought what you were telling me. Like this whole, ask somebody directly. I wasn't quite sure about that. But then he had an employee come into his office, very distressed, actually said, I'm gonna give it a shot. What, you know, I went through this training, I'll see what happens. Asked if she was suicidal. She said yes. And, you know, from there they were able to get her some, some help. So it does, it does matter. Um, anyone can help. Again, you don't have to be a professional. In fact, sometimes not being a professional is actually better, right? You can connect at different levels. You say yeah? Uh, my daughter is saying yes, right? <laughs> you can connect at different levels. You know, you, you, you aren't throwing sort of what you might know from a therapist or professional perspective, right? So everybody can help. Anybody can make contact. Anybody can, can be a lifeline for somebody. Um, there's actually, if anybody's heard of Kevin Hines, anybody know that name? Um, so Kevin Hines, he, he's a one percenter, he calls himself, but he's a one percent of people who have survived jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and, and he said that he was walking up and down the bridge, very distressed, thought it was being very obvious, and said, if one person says something to me, that'll tell me that you know, I, I shouldn't jump today. Somebody did come up to him, very innocent, asked him to take a picture as a tourist. And he, he gave him that back, and then that was when he decided that he would jump. But then he also said immediately his hands left and he regretted the decision. Um, and then the other one, and, there, and there's a lot in the, in the film about this, but certainly being direct. Asking direct questions is the best thing to do. Um, if, you know, we always say, like, you can ask somebody, are you thinking about harming yourself? I mean, it's a little, it, it's not as direct, but if you're really concerned about somebody, you need to ask somebody, are you thinking about dying or killing yourself? Are you thinking about suicide? It's an unambiguous yes or no question. Um, you know, in our trainings, and we talk about how to do it, when to do it, all that kind of stuff. But um, you have to ask that question if you're really concerned about somebody. And it does not make somebody suicidal. You know, there's all this talk about, um, if somebody's already thinking about it, and nobody's asking them, they're already thinking about it in private, right? You're not gonna put it into somebody's head. You're actually gonna open up and they'll be able to have that conversation with you. Um, so those are three of our messages. And then, oh, I should, 
language. I forget. I actually forgot what slides I put up there. Um, so <laughs> one of the things we talk about too is language. Um, so a lot of us grew up in the world of committed suicide. People committed suicide. People completed suicide. We really try to get away from that language because you commit a crime, you commit something negative. Um, and so we're trying to take it away from um, kind of the blaming act, right? And by saying that somebody died by suicide, they killed themselves, that actually gets to the root of the cause of the death. It gets it away from just the individual and allows us to look at the cause of death. You know, nobody has ever said that person committed heart attack. They never committed cancer, right? That's how somebody dies and allows us to look at that cause of death as a cause of death that we need to better understand and get away from the, the person blaming. So, you know, I say to people, if, if you grew up saying committed suicide, which a lot of us did, um, I need readers, but I don't have them, so I'm of that age, right? A lot of us grew up then. Um, I just refuse to. I, uh, my wife's showing their, her readers. I just refuse to wear them at this point. Um, but if you say it, you know, it's okay, but just think about trying to change that terminology and, th and how you talk about suicide. And then this last thing, and I've probably gone over time too, um, is a suicide risk model. It's actually called the Interpersonal Theory of Suicidal Behavior. It's very academic, but it's actually a really, really important model. Um, and what it shows, and it, it, it takes mental health out of it, because a lot of times we think somebody has to have mental health to kill themselves, or um, immediately somebody, if they have mental health concerns, that means they're automatically suicidal. That's not the case. A lot of it, and we've talked a lot about these components already, but what we know, or what this model says, is people who are really at risk of suicide. And again, you can think about this from other mental health issues are people who feel like they are a burden to others. We've talked a lot about that, and that was a lot of what was on uh, the, the, the writing thing, right, the writing thing. Um, people feeling like they're a burden, people feeling like they are alone, and not only do we have a mental health epidemic, we actually have a loneliness epidemic in the country. A lot of people are feeling alone, especially young kids. I think adults do as well. So you've got, I feel like I'm a burden to somebody, I feel like I'm alone. And then you have this idea called capability, or I can. So that is, it's not natural for humans to kill themselves. It's not natural to kill other people as well. But you can see people starting to gather that capability. We actually know uh, there's new research with athletes that as, as people get older, the amount of physical pain that they're used to actually leads to some of this capability. Um, you know, we talked about intoxication. Intoxication can lower inhibitions. Um, and an interesting thing in Colorado, I have to relook at these numbers recently, but a year or two ago, the number one substance in adolescence that was in somebody's body when they died by suicide. Anybody have a guess? Marijuana. Yep, it was marijuana, right? So we do know that there's a lot of effects there, um, but certainly it lowers people's inhibition. So if you have somebody who has this feeling of capability, this feeling they can harm themselves, they're feeling a burden to others, they're feeling alone, with or without mental health issues, that is somebody who is um, kind of in that, that middle area, that high risk uh, for potential suicide. Um, that's my last slide, I think, right? I kept it to three. Um, so I think that's it uh, for me. Obviously, we'll talk more, but.